Okay. So let's ask it 10. It's saying Barnell education and frictional head loss. That means it talks about how we can apply Barnell education into the uh, real world or in the real fluid. We already started from lecture sheet nine and we solved some problem uh, with fictional head loss, but it was given in the mention in the problem that fictional head loss is 3.22 meter or five meter. <clears throat> but in lecture sheet 10, uh, we'll figure out that how you can measure the fictional head loss. And beside fictional head loss, what are the other losses in the fluid system? And what are the correction of the Bernoulli's equation? That just, we just found that Bernoulli did not apply the fictional head loss that we applied in lecture sheet nine. Now we'll show you in lecture sheet 10, there is a one more loss and one more correction in the Bernoulli's equation. So let's go through the slide. Uh, before that, first we need to know what is the ideal fluid and what is the real fluid. Although we already discussed it a little bit before, right? So ideal fluid, it don't have any viscosity or no viscosity. Our viscous effect is negligible or zero. That is called ideal fluid. So there is no viscosity. So velocity distribution over the boundary is uh, uniform. That means if you have a cross section of a pipe, and if you make the velocity distribution through a section, then all the velocity distribution will be same length. That means velocity at the boundary is not zero, at the middle is same, all the fluid particle travel with the same velocity. So it's saying fictional head loss, no fictional head loss in the five, and velocity at the boundary is not zero. That is the definition of ideal fluid or property of the ideal fluid. And real fluid, it has viscosity. So it has, it will develop shear stress because shear stress tau, Newton law of viscosity, mu du by dy. Du by dy is the velocity gradient, but, or we can say mu by u by y, big y. y is the distance between two plates, and u is the velocity of the upper plate, right? So it's saying if you have a real fluid, it has viscosity, it will develop shear stress, and there will be frictional loss in the pipe. <clears throat> so it's saying the fluid has viscosity. Uh, due to viscosity, velocity of the fluid particle at the boundary should not be zero. And there will be frictional loss in the flow. Fluid particle away from the boundary will have higher velocity. And change of velocity across the flow, resulting in velocity gradient. Velocity gradient means del u by del y change of velocity along a direction and there will be viscous shear resistance in the fluid. So if I draw a pipe and if I like to observe the velocity profile of the fluid particle, then it will be like that. So what does that it mean? That means fluid particle at the wall, velocity is zero. Right over here, he traveling faster than the close to the wall. But at the middle, velocity is higher. So if I think this is y along this direction is the velocity, then along y direction, there is a change of velocity from one particle to another particle. That is called velocity gradient.
now a uh, lot of time uh, you go for job interview even you call a uh, mechanics to fix your air conditioning or refrigerator and they sometimes they call i need a tube okay you or you need a pipe so what is the difference between duct pipe and tube okay so uh, the, uh, both term actually meaning the same it carrying out uh, the fluid only difference in cross section so normally or in general you have circular cross section that carry the fluid liquid and gases high pressure gases flow section non circular are referred to is called duct if a flow cross section has non circular that mean rectangular then it is called duct triangular duct i never seen but uh, might be in some situation you know uh, rectangular duct normally use when fluid is a gas okay or air smaller diameter pipe are is called tube so uh, pipe is used normally high pressure uh, liquid and if is uh, you need to move low pressure air or low pressure gas then you can use the rectangular instead of circular and very small diameter pipe is called tube that is the basic difference now uh, when you will use duct that means rectangular cross section and when we will use the circular <coughs> it's saying for transportation of liquid you use circular pipe because pipe with a circular cross section can to stand large pressure difference between inside and outside without undergoing significant distortion that mean you carrying nasal gas plus cumulative to dhaka from a circular cross section why because is inside it has extremely high pressure and outside what pressure we have we have atmospheric pressure so inside uh, we have pressure pi which is very higher than the outside so if you have this type of situation then you need to use the circular cross section because if you figure out the del p that mean difference of pressure in that case is high okay so when you will use you know uh, circular non circular pipe or rectangular duct or i might say why you are not using a rectangular pipe to carry the gas from kumila to dhaka a uh, number one thing there will be more frictional loss right uh, in the circular pipe major loss that mean friction loss is low but non circular one is high this is one reason other reason that if you have non circular duct for high pressure fluid inside pressure is very high outside pressure is low right then the side is what like a beam then in the beam you have extremely high pressure at the bottom and i can say the is at the support of the beam then but outside pressure is very low because the delta p is very high so in that case uh, these edges of the pipe will be deflected like that similarly the these is all the edges 
so there will be high possibility of distortion you can avoid the distortion if you use high thickness material but cost will be high so for that reason if this delta p is high then you need to use the circular pipe and now in a building you might see a rectangular duct is using for air conditioning system because in that case the pressure inside the duct is little bit higher than atmospheric pressure so air can come out through the vent air conditioning vent so in that case the delta p is very low so you can use the rectangular duct and rectangular duct velocity will be low velocity is low there will be a little bit more pressure so air will come out smoothly through the vent that is the reason so right over here it's saying uh, non circular pipe or duct is only used in an application such as heating and cooling of a building where pressure difference is very small okay so those thing you should remember for the exam also for your job interview now uh, what is the laminar flow and turbulent flow we already discussed it several time the, this is uh, laminar flow you put dye in the flow this is the flow is smoothly that means this is laminar right here you put dye color you see right over here velocity is changing so this is turbulent and it take little bit right over here this is called this region is the transition region and after that there is a extremely fluctuation of the uh, velocity <coughs> or transfer of momentum that means this is turbulent flow uh, so flow from laminar to turbulent it doesn't happen at the same point it takes some time take some time that that mean might be 2 second or 3 second or might be 2 uh, minute it depends on type of flow so that within that time the fluid travel some distance that's region is called transitional region so until this point your reynolds number less than 2300 are uh, when turbulence start reynolds number higher than 4000 so this region is the transition region uh here is the the showing that this is turbulent and i'm sorry laminar this is is a laminar then it become little bit turbulent again laminar then this region this small region is kind of transition okay in transition flow your reynolds number is this much we already discussed this so let's go through the let's slide right over here it showing some real example of laminar and turbulent and transition flow so this is this portion is i'll call it laminar after that right this much portion is not turbulent yet but like this one over here smoothly right over here is not that much smooth but until this portion flow is transition and from all the region this portion is turbulence okay so you get some idea that how turbulence flow and laminar flow look like there is a one more uh, example you have a candle through the candle there is smoke rising and you see from this portion to this portion is uh, laminar but from here to here is turbulent am um, transition then is turbulent start okay now uh, you need to know one thing 
that uh, you like to attach a pipe with a tank. Say you might have a water tank or say any other chemical, liquid nitrogen, oxygen, or might be natural gas. And you connect a pipe with this tank. So when you open the gate, then fluid is coming and in the pipe. So obviously this tank is high pressure, then fluid is come out through high pressure. But at certain stage, say fluid have certain velocity at this point, this point, okay? But it should travel more faster. Say real velocity will be this mass. This mass velocity, it's a five meter per second. So right over here, two meter per second, then three meter per second, then four meter per second, then five meter per second. That means within this region, from within this region is velocity is gradually increase. Then we come toward the final velocity, five meter per second. So this within this distance, we'll call full velocity is not developed. Full velocity is developed at this point, right over here. Because over here, you are getting velocity five meter per second. Then all the way, it remains the fluid passing with same velocity. Now, you like to install a pressure gauge right over here, or a flow meter, density meter, or orifice meter right over here. What will you install? If you install a venturi meter, say right this point, or you'll install this point. If you install this point, you will not get accurate results because velocity is gradually changing. Full develop, develop velocity is not happened here. So you need to install beyond this point, right over here. You can install right over here better to install a little bit left side. So right over here, you are installing a density meter or orifice meter in a full uh, developed velocity region. Then your reading will be okay. Similarly, if you install a pressure gas right over here, it don't work, you will not get accurate result. You have to install right over here. So this distance is called hydrodynamic length, uh, the distance from entry point to the full velocity development region is called hydrodynamic entry length. So you need to know that length. <coughs> so other thing in the pipe, uh, when at the entry point, say fluid enter, at the point uh, right over here. So right over here, this fluid will not travel that much. Due to the viscosity, it will be stick to the wall, right? Then second one will travel this much. Third one will travel this much. Similarly, at the upper end will be like that, okay? Then, and all the middle, they travel this mass. Then you try to draw velocity profile at uh, next point, say right over here. So if I make a line right over here, then still velocity of the fluid particle at the boundary is zero. Then from the boundary, this fluid will travel a little bit faster. So he came in traveling more distance than him. So he traveling, say, right over here. And he traveling a little bit far, then all the fluid particle traveling the same distance. And same thing happened in the bottom. In then you try to figure out the velocity profile right over here. 
then you see velocity of the fluid particle again at the wall will be zero. But from the wall, he travel far distance right over here. And similarly happen in the other side. Then you take right over here, you see this particle travel more faster. This one travel more faster than this fluid particle. Finally, you take right over here, you see the maximum right over here. This one is reaches maximum velocity. And after that, velocity is not changing. Now, if you connect all the line with this maximum velocity, then you will get a line like that. Now, this line is called boundary layer. Because within this region, velocity of the fluid particle will remain low. <coughs> For example, if you have a flat plate of your, say, your balcony, and here is coming from the this side, from the this side in the winter or summer, whatever you would say. See, immediately, your heat over here, his velocity will be zero. Velocity will be zero. Then you take right over here, still there will be a fluid particle close to the your uh, wall or floor. But from the little bit away from the floor, he will travel this much, he will travel this much, you take far over here, he'll travel more far distance. So if this velocity is u, say 100 mile per hour, per hour, at one stage you will see right over here, his velocity is getting 99 mile per hour. So if you make the distance, Right over here, this thickness is called boundary layer thickness because velocity reaches 99% of free stream velocity. So this thickness is called boundary layer thickness and this profile is called boundary layer right over here because within this region, fluid velocity will be low. So if you have Five in the other wall will be same thing. So you will have only better flow within the middle of the boundary layer. Okay. So let's see what they like to say. So boundary layer in a pipe flow. Consider a fluid entering a circular pipe at uniform velocity. Uh, because of non-slip condition, fluid particle in the layer in contact with the surface of the pipe will be completely stopped. This layer also causes fluid particle adsorption layer to slow down. If this fluid particle velocity is zero, then he'll try to hold this fluid particle. He said, don't run, Please stick with me. So he'll slow down his velocity, that is saying. And gradually result as a friction. A velocity developed a velocity gradient along the pipe. That means along the pipe, there will be change of velocity. <clears throat> so we need to figure out, we know along the length, the velocity will be uh, changing and gradually increasing at the edge of the boundary layer thickness. So when it reaches 99% from NT point to say, I'm saying right over here, uh, velocity of the fluid, say velocity right over here, uh, entering with some velocity, and right over here, this fluid particle is traveling 99% of the free stream velocity, then this length, length from NT point to the point where velocity developed 99% of the 
fully developed flow, that thickness is called uh, hydro, not thickness, that's distance, it's called hydrodynamic length, is LH. So length of pipe duct is required to achieve a maximum velocity, 99% of fully developed flow when fluid entering fluid uh, velocity profile is uniform. Right over here is uniform. But at that distance to a region where you have 99% of free stream velocity, that distance is called hydrodynamic length. So it is calling length of the pipe of duct is required to achieve a maximum velocity. 99% of fully developed flow when fluid entering with a uniform velocity profile at the entry, okay? Now, how will figure out this length, hydrodynamic length? If uh, flow is laminar, then hydrodynamic length will be 0 0.05 RE, that means Reynolds number into D, that will be your entry length. If flow is turbul turbulent, then it will be 1.359 D diameter of the pipe into uh, 0.25 of power of Reynolds number. This is the, and this one approximately, you can say this is 10 D, okay? So uh, this is important when you like to install some equipment, uh, the kind of sensor or a flow measuring device in a pipe, then you need to make sure that you are not installing something within the hydrodynamic length. Length might be two feet, might be four feet, depends on the size of the pipe and what type of flow is coming, okay? Now, uh, one thing we need to figure out, uh, momentum equation. What is momentum equation? You are carrying fluid in a pipeline and sometime you need to change the direction of the pipe, right? Say pipe is coming this, this to the river, hilly area, sometime it flow over the hill, under the river, or sometime in it is in the direction, right? So in that case, uh, if you change the direction of the motion of fluid, then what happened? It momentum is sense because momentum m into uh, mass of the fluid into velocity, right? So velocity is the vector quantity. So you see right over here, fluid entering in this direction, then it making changing in 90 degree direction. That means the velocity, it might change direction and also magnitude, depending on the your diameter of the pipe. And sometime you might make a pipe kind of U-turn like this one. So if you figure out the change of momentum in this point, so this point, your velocity is along this direction. But right over here, velocity is opposite direction. So what will be change of momentum? You see, if we figure out the delta del mv, that means change of momentum, uh, your m, even constant I am saying, okay, into. So if this v2, then you say, or you can say this v2 uh, is opposite direction of this v1. So I am saying this is positive. So this V2 minus, minus, because this is opposite direction of, I thinking this is positive. So this has to be negative minus 
B1. So finally, you are getting M into uh, V1 plus V2, right? So you are getting uh, M into V1 plus V2. So what are you getting? You see your momentum is increasing. And due to the, this change of momentum, uh, there will be a force in the fluid and fluid will apply some force in the your pipe. And that's why if you have some uh, area where change of momentum is very high of the fluid inside the pipe, that reason you have to support strongly. If you don't support strongly, then you will see uh, there will be breaking of the support of the pipe or your pipe might be break down. So you need to, when you design a pipeline, you need to make sure that due to the change of momentum, there is not that much, <coughs> whatever the force, your support will able to carry that force. Okay. You need to make sure that uh, it will not create any problem on the support and also in the pipe. So how we will figure out that amount of force. So it is called, we'll figure out by impulse momentum equation. And what is saying impulse momentum equation? It's saying impulse applied to a body equal to the resulting sense of momentum of the body. So what is impulse uh, of, on the body? Impulse mean if a small is a big force work for a small amount of time. That is called impulse, right? For example, you are traveling 60 miles per hour. So you have high force on energy on your half mb square kinetic energy. Then you hit a tree within a second. That is the impact. Uh, you play cricket ball, ball is coming and you hitting with higher force. What is that your hitting time? Might be millisecond or one second. That is the impulse. So you, a ball coming with higher speed and you are hitting with a bat, right? So you are hitting with a bat with a higher velocity. So ball is coming along through this direction. And after hitting, it sends the direction, along the direction. That means there is a, due to the impact, there is a very high sense of momentum because they send that direction. And if hitting that ball, how much time? If I say force F into delta T, this delta T is very small that is called impact. Sometimes you will see in the news, if there is an earthquake, they call impact of an earthquake because it's big force working for a few time. Might be five seconds or might be 10 seconds only, okay? So it's saying that impulse applied to a body equal to resulting change of momentum. That means if F into delta T, that will be equal to change of momentum. That means if I use delta, that will delta mb, okay? So normally mass did not sense, only velocity sense, right? So it's saying, and this impulse momentum equation, you can also explain in terms of uh, Newton second law. What it's saying second law, the resulting force acting on the body in any direction is equal to the rate of change of momentum in that direction. And if we start from the Newton's second law, then you see force into delta T equal to impulse. Again, we are saying impulse equal to change of momentum. So let's see now. So F equal to MA, the, this acceleration you can uh, <coughs> explain that sense of velocity respect to time, 
right? So del V by del T. So you send that del V2 minus V1 by del T, then you get this one, right? Now, so this equal to F because rate of sense of momentum, right? As per uh, second law, you will get the, so right over here we are. Uh, now you see the impulse equal to F into delta T equal to sense of momentum MV. So what is my F from here? From this equation. So F equal to M into del V by delta T, right? And this delta T, we can put this delta T uh, just bottom of delta V, then it giving you acceleration. But our intention to go to the fluid, right? So instead of M, instead of solid body, there is no rate of change of mass, right? Because mass remains constant. For example, you're driving a car, but uh, instead fluid, your mass might be changing, depending fluid might be compressible the, due to the uh, head loss, there might be flow rate might be increased or decreased. So we are putting M by delta T. So M by delta T, that means M dot. So F equal to we are finally getting m dot. m dot mean mass flow rate. That mean coming kg per second into we'll get v2 minus v1. Now, how we'll figure out the mass flow rate? m. m equal to q into rho. Q is the flow rate, meter cube per second, then rho is the kg uh, per meter cube. So multiply these two, you'll get the mass flow rate. And what is the Q? Q equal to area into V. So area into V into rho, you get the mass flow rate. So this M dot, we can replace with the rho Q. So we are getting V2 minus V1. So if you apply uh, in a fluid, then you can say F equal to, if say uh, in a control volume, Q is different in two point. So right over here, you have Q1, then V1, then rho one. And right over here, you have Q2, V2, rho two. So in that case, how much will be the force on the pipe? So you'll get uh, the subtract of these two. Q2, rho2, V2, minus rho1, Q1, V1. Okay. Now, if uh, this two is same, this one, this one is same, then there will be no uh, force in the, in the pipe. Okay. So force in the pipe will be equal to rho q v2 minus v1. That means change of momentum you need to figure out. Uh, <laughs> due to the change of direction or change of velocity. Uh, we can uh, solve this problem. We have four minutes, right? Yes, sir. Okay. You see, uh, this is the pump right over here. He's taking water from your fluid from a reservoir. And the height of the pump from the, if you say this is the datum, then uh, is two meter, two meter about six feet. And there is a nozzle. Through the nozzle, the fluid is coming out. And diameter of the pipe, this point is giving. So right over here, you see, uh, even we getting the same fluid, same Q, but right over here, velocity would not be same because it's a smaller area of the nozzle, right? So over here, velocity will be high, and before the pump, velocity will be low. So what they're saying, 
water flowing from a reservoir by a pump which develop a 0.8 kilowatt on the flow so that mean how much power uh, pump is giving to the fluid or how much energy pump is adding to the fluid is 8 kilowatt find thrust on the pump support you need to figure out how much thrust will be in the support because if you put a very weak support then what will happen your pump will vibrate and then it will collapse the pipe you putting for your home is nothing but similar problem might be happen say you are carrying explosive liquid liquid nitrogen oxygen or might be liquid hydrogen that is extremely uh, you know uh, explosive so that's why uh, you need to make sure that your support is strong about to carry the thrust of the fluid. Now, how we can figure out? So, pump power is given. Instead of head, they are giving power. So, we know that pump power equal to rho g q h. So, pump power is given. Q is not given, right? Rho we know is saying water. So, rho we know, g we know, q we don't know right is pump with this two value we don't know now uh, we know q equal to a into b any reason if you are able to figure out the q you can figure out the uh, velocity at point three and velocity before the pump or why are we applying the boundary condition if we apply boundary condition at point one and point three then you see how much pressure at point one obviously atmospheric pressure how much pressure at point three when fluid coming out is experience again atmospheric pressure then velocity at point one i can say zero because if you maintaining the water tank height constant then it has to be zero velocity so velocity is zero beyond atmospheric pressure at z on if this is the reference line z on equal to zero and for three, Z3 will be 2.2 uh, 2 meter, right? So only over here, V3, we don't know. If we know the V3, we can figure out the Q. We can figure out the velocity over here if you need it, okay? So let's see how we can solve it. It will take just a few minutes. If uh, I have the math cut file right over here. Uh, did you see the math cut file? Yes, Hello? Sir. Okay. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Same. Okay, uh, it will take just a few minutes to solve it. Just one second. This is our problem, right? So at first, we write down all the data, what is given. So you see, we'll apply boundary solution at point one, at point three. So V1 equal to zero. This is our reference line. You say reference line right over here. So your Z1 will be then zero. Z3 will be two meter. B3 we don't know. And P1 will be atmospheric pressure. P3 will be atmospheric pressure. So then we apply this burn in equation. What happening? Fluid uh, coming at point one, he has some energy. P1 by gamma, B1 square by 2G plus Z1. Then on the way, he absorbing energy from the pump, then heading toward the three. So at three, you are getting P1 by gamma, this energy at point one, on the way, he receiving some candy from the pump, then uh, there is a, some loss on the way, then with this mass energy, he getting out from the point three. Now, you see, you cannot figure out the frictional head loss over here because frictional head loss, there is uh, length of the pipe is not given, right? So uh, we assume that frictional head loss equal to zero. Then you put all the data that V1 zero, Z1 zero, 
then p atmospheric pressure you put over here and hclf equal to zero so you get this equation okay h pump <coughs> so what is the our requirement we need to figure out the thrust on the pipe so if we know v3 v1 and q we can figure out and v1 we already know v1 equal to zero so we need to figure out uh, v3 and the q okay so this is one equation now you see the one clue they are giving they are giving power of the pump so power of the pump 8 kilowatt is given so this equation we will use so left side will have 8000 watt this is the power of the pump and q what is the q q equal to pi by 4 d3 square into v3 right so right over here we put the q power of the pump is given and h pump already is over here h pump equal to this mass so this is our equation left side we put the pump capacity this is rho this is g this is q and h pump value is not given we put as a h pump so from this equation we figure out the h pump so h pump equal to this one again h pump we got this one from bundle equation so these two equation are same so we can say from equation one and two this equal to this one right so this is our equation so in that equation uh, we solve it this equation so how we can solve it the uh, you know uh, is hard to solve uh, just by simple factor but if you have a scientific calculator you can solve it immediately but I was trying to show you over here that you took the math class in first semester, second semester. What is the application? Here is the application. We uh, go through the trial and error, that application of numerical analysis. So what I did, I write down the left side of my equation, this value, right? The value remains always same constant. Then I assume the velocity. First, I'm saying 20 meter per second. So my right side coming this mass, left side was this mass. What is the difference right over here? Too high. Is both are difference is zero, then my solution is accurate, right? So it's very high, then I think V3 equal to 14, 10 meter per second. So this is my left side, this is my right side, this is my left side. So you see it's too low, then I need to increase the velocity. So I think velocity is 15 meter per second. So this is my right side, this is my left side. What happened? The difference has come down, little bit higher. So I th instead of 14, I put little bit less, 15, from 15 to 14. So when I put 14, this is my right side, this is my left side. So it coming less, 3.28. So what does it mean? So I need to increase this value a little bit more than 14. So I put 14.5. So this is my right side. This is my left side. Difference is 4.24. So I just keep it over here. But again, you can increase. You can say 14.6, then what is the value is coming? So numerically, this is the application of numerical analysis. Okay, even if solve with scientific calculator, inside the calculator, the program do the same thing. Okay, so finally, I got V3, 14.5. So how do we figure out the Q? Q equal to area A3 into V3. Nozzle diameter is given, so you'll get the Q. I get the Q. Rho is given. Now, what is the F? F equal to rho Q V3, V1 is zero. So you see, V1 zero. So you put in the equation, I get this mass Newton. Force on the pipe support, okay? Any, any question?
any question sir, one one question sir yeah sure sir uh, the uh, pump is pulling water so water yeah. is coming to the pump so why we are taking the velocity zero uh velocity zero why are we applying the bernoulli's equation uh, you you look right over here inside the pipe the velocity is not the zero but what we did we apply the anyway your question is good question i appreciate you that you asked the question we apply the bernoulli's equation not inside the pipe number point one is outside of the pipe in the reservoir and right over here what what is the reason we are thinking why fluid you say there is no pump fluid will come at point three yes or no obviously no if there is pump but due to the pump fluid is coming at point three with some higher speed what is the reason because he is pulling right you are throwing your friend with the hand that means you energy giving energy to him to throw or fly in the air same thing <laughs> right over here i need to say that how much energy have in the fluid because it's saying depth is giving how much 1.5 that means even you pulling the water but the depth is uh, height is remain constant because water is coming from other source like you might have uh, constantly and maintaining this height so this height is not going down so that's why we are assuming v1 zero and pressure p1 also atmospheric pressure same thing over here that pressure is atmospheric pressure because no outside only you have atmospheric pressure that that's the reason you got it hello yes sir and sir which way fast working sir which way fast working okay so fluid is thrust is the vector right so v3 which way v3 is working along this direction right so ultimately the if i draw the this is your pipeline so your thrust of the fluid is going along this direction right so inside the surface of the say your pipe uh, is making the polythene then what will happen then your this thrust right over here working in opposite direction pipe wall pipe wall has to resist this force coming from the pipe fluid and your wall has to resist that force if all is strong enough then he will resist right but there is no support then what will happen this this uh, wall or this pipe he will flow along this direction so in the support you have to put a reaction and that reaction will be opposite direction of this wall but what will be the in the bottom then in the bottom will be along this direction right so you see you have this support say supporting your uh, pump with uh, two angle right so inside the pipe is force working along this direction you think other way so how you can balance it right here force fluid force working to the right direction so how much force will be in the support should be opposite direction right so this will be reaction force f that is enough you see how a force working yes sir got it got it you got it you, yes sir got it you, you got it but still this is uh, stable uh, no sir why uh, 
don't know i need to review the lecture for no, the no, answer <laughs> <laughs> you, don't, you don't need to do look carefully this is interesting your ape working along this direction so support working in the bottom how much the height between this distance this mass so there will be a rotation right is moment working along this direction so <clears throat> that means he'll try to your support rotate clockwise that means this support will experience force upward direction this support bottom direction so you have to put a reaction force over here and over here so you see the support will experience two force this force and also some vertical force okay uh, anyway you, you got your answer right yes sir Okay. And these are very complex things, sir. Why complex things? What do you say? Uh, this is uh, like hmm. very complex, sir. <laughs> Word is not coming in my mouth. How to say? It. Okay, very but complex. but you understand that uh, how force is coming from the fluid to the pipe support yes, due to change of momentum. You understand that one? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Okay, you understand that one. That's enough. And why I showing you that how force working in the uh, support, right? Uh, that is actually knowledge of your solid mechanics. Uh, and hopefully you might be learn a little bit more in the support uh, in the, from the solid mechanics. Just uh, uh, take just passion. Say you have pump or something say if this is one right over here is the support say this is a tool in bangla or chair but is a fixed in a park you are kicking with your leg with force f but is not uh, breaking down why because two things might break down in the right over here right right over here or support might be break down so they are strong enough to carry this force your kick but support you need to make sure support also strong so how support is react so support will have a opposite direction you are pushing to a right so support will say hey, okay don't push me right i have enough force to uh, to uh, carry you okay so he will he apply this much force now how do you see is there any rotation no sir no rotation again you uh, yes sir rotation rotation yes okay. rotation upper one pulling right bottom one pulling left that somebody pulling your head to a right direction and your leg in left direction what will happen your body will rotate so how you can protect this one rotation which way anti-clockwise right so due to that this anti-clockwise you see what will happen if your support is say on the clay then what will happen this will go down and this support will go up right so you need to protect that one that means due to the rotation this support will try to go downward this support will try to go upward but you have to protect that motion how you can protect that mean if your support has to be strong enough to react that force opposite of this force this will be downward and this will be upward so these two force which way making rotation this is downward this is upward that means anti clockwise right and this one making clockwise anti clockwise and clockwise then you become neutral so when you, as an engineer when you making the support then you need to consider these two force this force and this force to make sure your support is strong enough okay uh, hopefully you might understand yes, sir. okay so uh, we can leave it here uh, we already took six minutes from you okay uh, thank you very much and